I'm Bob Jackson, and this is my son Jabari Jackson. Together we are of Jackson and Associates. I want to thank Gil, as well as all the members, for giving us an opportunity to, uh, to speak in terms of uh, insurance and to allow Jabari to sort of give his presentation. Jackson and Associate is a, uh, basically we're an insurance broker. Uh, we've been around for about 20 years. We represent a number of companies and clients. Uh, some of the companies that we do represent are Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, Kaiser, United Health, Mutual Omaha, uh, Equitable, as well as uh, uh, Presidential Life. Now, I will say two things. You all are a tough audience because I say a lot of ahs and you knows and whatever, so I know if I had to be evaluated, you all, I would be uh, filling that little cup up over there. And I also want to just say, uh, if I could, uh, I saw uh, Dr. Dubin's uh, uh, YouTube, and if I could just have some of that, some of those vitamins you had on there, that would be very good. I enjoyed it. I, uh, we're going to take part, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Rivers, you gave a very good presentation on the health self. I guess we're now going to do the wealth self, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So with that said, uh, Jabari's going to be speaking, uh, basically, we're, we're going to be talking about the different types of insurance. And secondly, we're going to, uh, he'll have the first half, and in the second half, I'll talk about perhaps the purpose of life insurance. So with that said, Jabari. Hey. hey. started with um, <laughs> I just wanted to say that I've enjoyed the entire uh, program so far and uh, really got a lot about a lot out of the different presentations that were given um, like my father said I'm, my name is Jabari Jackson I'm a life insurance agent at Mutual of Omaha and I want to talk with you tonight about three different types of insurance um, those being accidental death insurance term insurance and whole life insurance. The first I want to talk about is accidental death insurance. And the start off, accidental death insurance is very cheap insurance. It's usually priced at uh, a lot of times below $20. For example, you can get basically $100,000 worth of insurance for $10 to $15 a month. The reason why insurance companies can do this is because with accidental, accidental death plans, they only have to pay up on the insurance when you pass away from an accident. Those being a plane accident, a train accident, a bus accident, or a car accident. Now, not to step on anyone's feet or be offensive, but who in here knows anyone that's passed away from a plane accident? Or a train accident? Or a bus accident? Or a car accident? Now, I know there may be some people in here, and I don't mean to be offensive, that know of, of people who passed away, but nowadays the medical technology is such that they'll rush you to shock trauma and save your life. You may be paralyzed or have other medical com uh, conditions, but they'll save your life, and insurance, comp insurance companies know that in those cases you, they won't have to pay up on the insurance. So they'll be collecting your premium all that time and never have to pay up. So that's basically accidental death insurance. Now the next one to move on to is term insurance. With term insurance, it's insurance that will cover you for a certain period of time. Those time periods usually being 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years. Term insurance is, uh, like I said, it expires after a certain period of time. Term being the root word of terminate. So after that period of time, if and many times people outlive it, they won't have to pay up on that insurance. Or in some cases, they'll triple or double or triple your, your premium and make it so that you'll want to get out of the insurance and not keep the insurance where in that situation they wouldn't have to pay on the insurance any longer. Uh, what's being passed out to you now is uh, the different types of insurance and the points I'm making right now. Uh, term insurance is usually for younger people. Um, that being because you have situations that you may want to cover with that term policy, uh, such as if you're recently purchasing a house and you have a 30-year mortgage, 
you'd want to have a term policy for 30 years so that in case something were to happen to you during that period of time, your mortgage would be covered and paid for and your family won't have to have that burden. Um, another example where term insurance is used is with teachers or other government employees. A lot of times uh, employers will provide their employees with insurance coverage as an added bonus of working for them, but after they either retire or stop working for that place of employment, they will no, they'll no longer have insurance because employers don't want to keep paying policies on policies for people that don't work for them. So in those cases, you'll either be out of insurance or have insurance that decreases over an amount of time. Now there is a type of term insurance, a product, a great product that will in the same way as term insurance does, but at the end of the term, you get back all the premium that you paid into. So you get all your cash back, and that's called a return to premium product. And with this, like I just said, at the end of the, let's say, 20 year period, you're finished paying off and you've outlived the policy, and the insurance company will refund you all of your money back. And this is a great product, so you, when you do outlive the policy, you're not left dry without anything. You still have the money that you put into it and it essentially becomes a savings account. The last uh, policy that I want to talk about today is whole life insurance. And whole life insurance is just as the title states, it's insurance that will cover you for the entire span of your life. And with whole life policies, what you do is you uh, sign up for the policy and you lock in on a fixed rate so that for the entire time that you're alive, you'll pay that same rate for the rest of your life and it never goes up, never increases, and you're guaranteed insurance when you pass away and your family members are guaranteed the money that you signed up for. Whole life insurance is usually meant for individuals usually 50 and older so that they can lock in on that rate when they're 50 years old and not have to worry about a high payment because of health issues or age when they get older. So it's good to sign up for a whole life policy that, at that time. We also, my father and I also represent companies where even if you're older and have certain health problems, uh, we represent companies where they won't ask any health questions and there won't be a health exam so that your condition won't affect the type of insurance or the amount of insurance you can get. Those conditions could be HIV or heart, if you've had a heart attack or cancer. It Does, doesn't matter because the insurance companies won't ask any health questions. And the policies are a lot of times at a low affordable rate depending on your age and the amount to, that you want. It can be anywhere between 40 and on up, but I want to make the point that it's not a expensive type of insurance because of any problems that you might have. So those are the types of insurance. Um, right now I want to ask my father to come up and he's going to explain uh, final expenses and those things that you would have to pay for at that time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, I don't know how you evaluate him for as his father. I can't tell what he does. Well, once again, uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the purposes, and uh, as far as final expenses, if you could just pass that back a little bit to each person. Um, that said, there's there's basically the purpose of of uh, insurance are twofold for the most part. One is, well, it's always for, for protecting your asset. Uh, and that could be your income. Uh, <clears throat> some people use insurance to pass down wealth. Uh, and let's say if you worked for the most part all your life uh, as a government employee or as, as an employee, you might not have uh, gained the wealth that perhaps a business person or a person who is actually uh, uh, a, involved in the stocks. So what folks do is, uh, as opposed to passing down wealth through a business or, or investments, they might just take out a, an insurance policy, 100000 200000 a half a million, and just as they work, add that as one of their investments, if you will, knowing that when they pass, this amount of money is going to go to their heirs tax-free. That's, uh, if you do that, it's best to do it early when you're young and when you're healthy. However, some folks, as Jabari mentioned, will find themselves at the end of employment 
uh, with term insurance, and perhaps they did not evaluate or weren't told that it would be ending upon their uh, employment or retirement. And so they find themselves, upon retiring, uh, without any insurance for when they are 70 or 80 years old because it terminated. So with that said, you'll find that there's final expenses. And so if you're buying insurance not for wealth purposes or to protect your assets such as your house and other uh, uh, assets that you might have insurance for, then you might just have your final expenses. And the final expenses, uh, I passed out a sheet that has the final expenses. It basically com consists of three parts for the most part. The first part, the first part is your funeral cost. The second part is your casket cost. And the third part is your cemetery cost. And so the funeral cost is basically what the underwriters, oh excuse me, what the undertakers or the funeral directors will charge for the purpose of uh, embalming you, having the service at their funeral home, uh, and basically uh, some other odds and ends. And that's usually about $3,000. In addition to that, they will have a cost for the casket. And that can range anywhere from $3,000 to $15,000. All depends on which type you choose. And I would like to say, uh, if you ever are, in a, well, not you, but your loved ones, uh, don't tell the funeral director that you have insurance. Because once you tell him that, he is just jacking that price up. So once you tell him you have insurance, then he's no longer talking about a $2,000 or $3,000 casket. He's starting at a $5,000, maybe a ten, or all his expenses that he might uh, present are going to be on the high end. So it's best that you or your loved ones do not tell them that you have a life insurance and just let them tell you what the range really is. The third cost is cemetery cost. And this, uh, this is kind of tricky because in the last 10 years it's been going up significantly. But a plot of land for the most part will cost you, your gravesite will cost you about $2,000. Uh, it's been going up recently. And so once you have that $2,000, some people buy a plot of land and they bought it 10 or 20 years ago. And that said, they think that it's all over, they tell their children, I have my land, my husband has his land, and so forth and so on. However, Recently, a lot of cemeteries have been able to add additional cost that uh, wasn't as expensive 10 years ago or 15 years ago, and that is the vault. How many people know about the vault? That's one cost. Mm -hmm. And the second cost is the opening and closing. How many folks have heard about that? Well, that said, the vault to begin with, well, let's start with the opening and closing. The opening and closing, whenever the cemetery talks about that, and your land can be paid for, but they will say, okay, well, you're opening and closing. You bought your land uh, uh, 20 years ago, and you paid next to nothing. It probably was more like $200, and that was $2,000. But they will say the opening and closing is $1,000, maybe $1,500. And they know that you're not going to go anywhere because you've already bought the land. Hmm. You're not going to go down the street because now you will have opening and closing and land to pay for. So they'll say it's it's $1,000, $1,500 to open the grave and close the grave. Well, you know, I have cousins that can open it up for, for $50, you know, but <laughs> that said, uh, it's 1000 and so that's one cost. The second is the vault itself. Now, historically, there were no vaults, but the vault is a cement that basically contains the casket. So you place the casket inside of the vault, and what it is, it's to... Basically, they say it's so that the land will not sink and so that the cemetery will have more of an even appearance. So that's something new, but they will say the vault is $1,000, maybe $1,500. And so at that point, what you thought was paid in full, now you find that there's additional $2,000 if you already had your land. So that said, it's good to be aware of it so that if you are planning to purchase they call it, you know, pre-purchase uh, your cemetery. Understand that there's going to be added costs later on. Perhaps in your contract, you can already establish that this is going to be paid at today's prices because they have gone up significantly. So anyway, the total expense is approximately $10,000. So that said, many folks will, at the age of 50, 60, or 70, they'll invest in a final expense insurance plan. And these plans uh, today are, as Jabari had mentioned, they are plans that 
you can get for small, small amounts that are reasonably priced for uh, less than $50 a month or on average $50, or depending on, on your age, but they, but they do not require a medical examination. So many folks who didn't purchase insurance when they were younger might just say at the age of 70, or if they retire and find out they don't have any insurance, they would actually be interested in a final expense plan. And that's what the final expenses are. And finally, we do represent companies that do provide that type of insurance. So that's an informative speech. And if anyone was in, are interested in it, please contact us. Thank you all. Thank you.